Hey guys, Slash Devotee here again. I'm using my Black Crusade card Rainbow Nahu Mech, and I'm up against Chaplain Mavros, who's able to do a bit of burst damage from Space Marines on blue planets. We've got Karnath on the first planet, then Barlas, and then Iridial, Taurus, and Planum. So that's three blue planets staggered down the line for Mavros. It's a lot of green from planet two onwards, which is dangerous, uh, and uh, one condition for red by planet four. I've got a Sartek complex and I've only got one non-Necron unit so that would allow me to get some extra draw in. I've got Recycle that can help me dig for uh, my um, enslavement dial changing cards. Uh, I've got a Void Pirate which is handy um, and so I think overall I'm happy enough with this. I've, I've got a the Necron Limited Reducer which could help as well. So uh, Simop has decided to keep, and so I'm going to keep as well. And he's straight into it. STC Fragment uh, as the first play, um, which is a limited, unique uh, card that allows you to reduce the cost of an Elite by 2. I follow up with my Sautic, costs me 1, and whenever I put in a unit uh, that I have n no other members of that faction, it allows me to pick a resource or a card, get some good draw, and he drops the Sword Brethren Dreadnought onto the first planet. A 7 cost elite with 3 command, 5 attacks, 6 hit points. Big Black Templar's vehicle. It's unstoppable trait. First time it was assigned damage. Ignore the damage. And in his case, trigger the ability of the planet. And on Karnath, uh, that means uh, Mavros is able to simply use it at will. Uh, I noticed that Taras and Iridial are both down the line, so he can heal the Dreadnought, he can, because I'm expecting he won't put any other units into play, he can use Taras, uh, let's see, he can trigger it with the Dreadnought, and then if he wins Planet 1, he can trigger it again. So that's that's pretty worrying to me, and uh, that, that gave me pause. Uh, I started thinking, should I put out these units? And you see me pausing, I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure. If I only put out one unit, then he won't be able to trigger Taurus. Um, so one is fine, and I use that to draw a card, and I get another Space Marine unit. And that basically, I decide I, I may as well try and collect the command on the rest of the planet array. Um, he's done, he's got no other options and so I can I can pretty much unopposed put out these relatively cheap command units down the line. Taurus is worrying me. Planum is a worry as well because he could use uh, Karnath and Planum to move that Dreadnought to wherever my Warlord is and uh, cause me some damage there. So there we go, I bite the bullet, and I put out another tactical squad, and I throw out the Void Pirates as well. Okay, so I've got a large amount of command units out. I've got a couple of limited cards that I can't use at the moment, so I decide to recycle my Cultists that I can't use right now, and my promotion that isn't really going to be doing much right away, and I replace my cards with the Recycle, um, get three new cards. And I've got two new uh, factions for the next turn, and I've got an extra copy of my uh, limited Necron cost reducer. Uh, so I hopefully will get another recycle and be able to discard that. It's, it's fuel for that. Uh, and now I'm thinking I may as well go to planet 4. I was tempted to go to planet 1, uh, just to stop the Dreadnought getting command, but I was quite concerned that he would pretty much kill my ward straight away if I did that. He goes to planet 4 as well. So that means he gets no command there, he just gets uh, Planet 1, and I get the rest of the command down the line, and neither of us get Taurus. So there we go, I get 5 cards and a resource, which is fantastic, digging through for my uh, linchpin cards that I need for this deck, and he gets a single card and a single resource. So right then I was thinking, yeah, this is this is feeling good, I'm feeling like, uh, like this is a good position to be in. Uh, and then he uses Mavros' ability to trigger Taurus. Uh, 
and he goes for resources to begin with. So he's up to five resources and six cards. And then we're into the battle. And I have nothing I can do there. Just sort of looking through my cards and thinking about what I might play next turn. What are my options going to be for the next turn? Uh, so he gets Kar Karnath and he triggers Taras again. And this time he goes for cards. Suddenly I'm thinking, oh, that I think I've I've I think I've ruined my possibilities straight away. Uh, and then we go to battle at Taurus, and I'm realizing that this is going to go all the way bad because I do not have uh, a good enough warlord, or at least not without any shields in my hand. And uh, that's a definite downfall with this deck, as I've maximized how many factions I have, which means I've minimized my events and my attachments. Um, so I take a hit of two. I may as well swing back and hit him for two, um, but he's got just the edge of me. I'm a 2-6, and he, I believe, is a 2-7. So um, it's not going to pay off for me to stick around at Taurus here. Uh, he uses a No Mercy as a shield. Takes one point of damage. And... Technically, I have to wait to see if he stays, which, of course, he does, and I get out of dodge because there's nothing I'm going to be able to do there, um, which means he can trigger Taras for the third time in the first turn. Uh, I think my decision to spread out my command and see if I can do something that way was wrong, was just flat out wrong. I think Barless might have been a better choice. Um put out one of these command units, go to Tar uh, Barlas, or even go to Karnath just to uh, try and limit how much command he was going to get from the Dreadnought. So he's taken six cards and three resources out of the combat phase of turn one. Um, it's terrible. <laughs> very, very bad. Okay, so we're on to uh, turn two. I've managed to pick up uh, one of my important cards there, the Harbinger of the Storm. But that's not quite what I'm looking for, so I change my enslavement dial to Tau. I've got two Tau cards, which is really good. The Vashya, which is really good with Nahumek because uh, they are able to mobile around the planets and hopefully stay alive and fuel Nahumek's uh, reaction and fuel my non-Necron faction rules. And I'm going to begin with an Earthcast Technician. I throw him right down the end of the line. And then I'm going to use his ability. He's a one-cost command unit with one command, one attack, one hit point. But he allows you to dig this top, search the top six cards for a drone or an attachment. And there, that's what I'm. The, the only reason I've caught them basically. Uh, there's a couple of other units that would have been nice to, to actually draw. Now they're at the bottom of my deck, but uh, I got the staff of command. That is absolutely what I'm digging for in my Nahumek deck. I need to be able to put out as many factions as I can. And then I trigger the Saltec Complex after as a reaction to the Earthcast Technician. Because I've already dug and got the card I'm looking for, I use it to gain a resource. He throws out a Tech Marina Aspirant for two resources. Space Marine unit, um, Black Templar, I think. Pretty sure. And there are one attack, three hit point, one command. Every elite unit at that planet gains the text, pay a resource to ready this unit, limit once. Um, so it's very handy. Uh, Black Templar unit. So I'm just trying to do the maths of what I can possibly put out now. And I think I'm trying to get out a variety of command units. Uh, I use the Vashya to keep my command on uh, a radial over the top of the Tech Marine. And the Vashya can move to planet 1 or planet 3 to avoid being killed off and keep my uh, non Necron factions up. Uh, he's got another Tech Marine, which he throws down onto Taurus. And I'm thinking I'll get out a Rogue Trader. And I'll use that to cancel the Tech Marine's uh, command. So I'm just trying to sort of limit what he can take in off the planets. Limit his income. 
and he's done. He's got nothing else, despite having five resources and 11 cards, which is a little bit concerning for me, a little bit worrying. Uh, but we're over to me. I've, I'm down to two resources left, and I've got a few things that I would like to be able to do. I've got the Harbinger of the Storm, so I'd like to be able to get um, more factions out. I throw out the Time Warm Morn Stasis Script, which is limited and unique, and reduces the cost of the next Necron card by one. And I use that to get out a Harbinger of the Storm, which lets me change my command dial. Uh, not command dial, sorry, my enslavement dial. And I am thinking I'll put out my Slith because he's nice and cheap and good command. And then I realize that I have zero resources. I've misread what I'm doing. Um, and I'm just going to say I've, I've misthought through how much money I have here. Um, and I do have other options, so I'm like, well, I can put out the stuff for command anyway, it's free, so I do that. And then I think, actually, would he mind very much if I take that back? I'm not playing in a tournament at the moment, um, and so I'm just going to... I'm just going to do it. Mind if I redo that element. So, s play the staff to get Dark Elder, keep the unit in my hand. So, I didn't use him, I didn't use that, so I will still be at one resource. I would have used the staff of command to change to Dark Elder, which would allow me to put out a Dark Elder unit. The Sautic Complex allows me to get a resource for that. And then, actually, there's no point in putting out the Harbinger of the Storm at this point, because I can't afford my third faction yet. Um, so it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, puts a unit at the other end of the, the planet array, but just not, not very thought through. And I decide I'm going to go to Planet 3 because I have three uh, factions, non-Necron factions. That means Nahumek, when he, at the beginning of the combat phase, he can target a unit at the planet and reduce its hit points by the number of non-Necron factions, which in this case is three. So I can kill off a Tech Marine Aspirant just instantly. I can just kill it. Uh, but he goes to Taris as well with that great big Dreadnought, which is horrifying. Um, I didn't want to do that at all. Um, but I do get all the other command, and nobody gets command on Taras, so he gets none. I get five cards and three resources, which I feel like is pretty nice. It's pretty handy. Now I'm going to use Nahumex Reaction to kill off that Tech Marine Aspirant. There we go. Killed it off. That's nice. Uh, and then he's going to trigger Taris, um, but oh, uh, I just have to point out to him, unfortunately, Taris is not a blue planet. Um, so you really need Karnath to be able to do all that silly shenanigans like he was able to do the last turn. So unfortunately, he uh, doesn't get to do that. Um, So we've got Barlas, he's got nothing going on at Barlas. Uh, so I'm just going to, I'm targeting it to to imply that I'm, I'm triggering it. Um, but I think he thinks I'm attacking it for some reason, so he says done again. So I'm just going to make it nice and clear, trigger the planet. There we go, he gets rid of a standard bearer, which is a fantastic result for me. Standard bearer is a Astra Militarum unit that allows you to, uh, it ambushes into a planet and, allow, and it, um, readies a unit at the planet. So he's able to ready that massive uh, uh, Dreadnought, and I'm very glad that he's not able to do that. So we're on Taras. I absolutely cannot fight him on Taras, so I'm going to have to leave. There we go. Um, and now he can kill my Rogue Trader quite easily. 
and that means he wins Tyrus and gets to trigger it again. Really not what I'm looking for. Alright, so he's sitting on 8 resources and 10 cards at the end of turn 2, when I have 4 resources and 11 cards. This really isn't paying off for me. Uh, I've got the Ravenwing Escort, which is really good for shifting around some of my bigger units, or keeping uh, a variety of um, factions alive. Um, just sort of going through my cards and thinking what's going to be useful, what's not. I'm possibly... I could possibly use Hate to kill something like one of the Tech Marine Aspirants. That could be quite good. And he drops a Land Speed of Vengeance for four resources, thanks to his SDC um, uh, fragment. And I'm going to try and get out some more factions, some different factions. Bump up how many I've got on the, on the table here. So it's a six-cost elite normally with one command. It's a vehicle. It has four attack, three hit points, but it's flying, so it halves damage taken in, and it has area effect three, because it's got some big guns on that land speeder. Uh, and that's a bit scary as well. So I throw out a one cost Astro Militarum down the end as a command, and get a resource back, so it's effectively free, which is nice. Gets me my faction total up a little bit. Uh, it's not a green planet where the Scalum Shrine Guard work better. They get a bonus plus one attack and plus one hit point on green planets. But to be quite honest, I, I just need another faction card down the line to build some command. That's fine for me, I think. He throws Fire Drake Terminators onto the first planet. So I'm getting quite scared by the big nasties that are turning up there. They, they are a five cost elite with two attack. Uh, to command and six hit points three attack potentially and when they're declared as a defender your unit has to take it damage which is before actually finishing the attack which means um you know small things will die before they hurt the fire drake terminators i put out the harbinger of the storm at this point which is a unique so that's why i put it on the first planet to allow it to die potentially uh which means i can play it if i draw another um, Harbinger, I'm going to be able to play it. And the danger with them is if you play them safely and they stay alive, you lose the ability to play another one and get an extra faction out. But uh, I use it to enslave Chaos and get my Chaos Fanatics, drop them out. So that's now I've got five factions by turn two. And I get another resource out of that from the Sour Tech Complex because it's a new faction that I don't have in play. So the Sautet complexes and the ability to put out all sorts of different factions every turn is what I'm going for with this deck. That's sort of the, the main thing here. The Shard of the Deceiver I'm considering putting down on that first planet um, because I've got so many cards in hand that I, I feel like I'm going to be able to keep it alive, keep it going. The Shard dies when you run out of cards, but it forces you to discard cards quite regularly. Uh, but I decide in the end that I've only got four cards in the discard, which means the Shard would have four attack on four hit points. So I decide I'm going to go with my Doomsday Arc, which is the alternative non Necrom faction oomph in the deck. The Doomsday Arc is a six cost, six cost elite. It has two command and it has uh, four attack, four hit points, five attack, five hit points. But area effect is equal to the number of non Necrom factions. So it's at the moment an area effect five is really 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 handy. I commit to planet one because I'm going to try and knock something out with my Nahumex reaction minus five hit points. I actually win the command there with my command with my command icons which is great um, and also all the rest down the down the line obviously. Uh, and so I'm hoping that the area effect of my doomsday arc is going to get me through here. And I take five more cards, three more resources, which is looking fantastic. I'm fueling everything I want here. I've got all my cards to make it make it work how I want it to work, which it's it's really great. I'm really happy. I've got a sixth faction there, which is really good. Hate, I was thinking potentially I could be using to get rid of Tech Marine Aspirants. Um, 
if I change to Space Marine, but I already have Space Marines out, so I'm not sure I want to be on Space Marine. And I just want to check that he is getting his um, command from Taurus, because I don't think he actually claimed it. There we go. One card, one resource. Okay, so we're on a blue planet on the first here. Uh, as the combat phase starts, my Nahu Max reaction is going to be negative 5 hit points to the land speeder, which he backlashes, because I am targeting an army unit at the planet. Uh, that means he is able to backlash a targeted ability. Uh, he can't destroy my warlord, but that really, really uh, worries me. Um, because I was really relying on having that land speeder dead. Then he targets the Fire Drake Terminators with chat for Mavros's ability, which means they take a damage, but they gain a attack. And then he does it again, and they have two attack and two damage off them, because uh, his Warlord ability is twice per phase. Then he plays his signature event, Vow of Honor, which is after a unit, I think a Space Marine unit you control takes damage, you play this event and that gains plus three attack. So he's got plus three attack from the event, plus two attack from Mavros's ability being used twice, and then natural attack of two or three, I can never remember, and I haven't hovered over it long enough to see. So suddenly his Fire Drake Terminators are at an attack of seven or eight, and now I'm really, really worried. My best bet is that he goes for my Warlord, which of course he's not going to do because he's not a fool. Um, eight damage, it's eight. Yep. And I, I have absolutely nothing that could be used to save my Doomsday Art. It is dead. If I had the, using as I'm using Black Crusade fan cards, um, the Living Metal would potentially help there. Um, if I had, that's I think the only thing, to be honest, I think that's it. A Lich Guard Sentinel might have been uh, able to help as well. But those are the only things I could have used. So now, uh, going from Area Effect 5, which would have killed a large chunk of the units at this planet, um, is, is now nothing. Basically nothing. Uh, yeah. And so I... I've got to leave. I've got to get my warlord out. I can't risk being bloody just yet. Uh, I need that Nahu make ability to just point and click and remove units. But that means it's his attack, and he does area effect three with the land speed of vengeance, and that just that kills everything I've got on this planet. That just takes them all out. Um, yeah, I now have no space marines on the board, so I need new space marines on the board to get my uh, faction focuses up. And it is a Ridial, so he gets to heal the Terminators of the damage that he put on them. Uh, that that really hurts. That's not good. It's really not good. So he's got the Dreadnought, the Fire Drake, and the Landspeeder. All his um, big, big nasty elites. Uh, I have card advantage on him, but only by a very small amount. Uh, and I have four factions in play at the moment. So, not looking good, not looking healthy. Okay, so we're on to turn four. Uh, he's now got a win condition for red. He's taken all the red planets so far. Um, and next planet would be a win condition for blue. And I've got my orcs, so I can get out uh, six of the seven factions. This turn I can put out two one-cost faction units and use my Sautic Complex to res uh, return the cost, which means I will have six factions in play. And I'm trying to, the only reason I'm spreading them out amongst the planets is just to try and limit the number of uh, factions he can kill at any one time. So I forgot to set to Orcs before we begun there, so I just make sure it's set. He gets another Land Speed of Vengeance onto that first planet. And I change to Eldar for my enslaved faction. But he has nothing else to put out at the moment, so put out Sam Han Kinsman. Again, another cheap unit that I can get the cost back with Sautic. There we go, so I'm effectively 
uh, only down cards, which is great. He's done, so I uh, use the stasis crypt to reduce the cost of the shard and throw the shaft onto the first planet. So it's currently a um, 7 cost, 1 command, 9 attack, 9 hit point unit. Every time a phase begins, or a combat round begins at the same planet, I have to discard a card, but I also have 13 cards in hand, so I feel like that's fine. Um, I should have discarded a card for the beginning of the command phase, which... I should do in a moment. Uh, again, I get a wide swath of command, because he's not spread out. He's using his big units to bully those first planets. Four cards and three resources for me. There we go. I discard a card for the shard for the command phase. Yeah, I'm just saying that that's what that's from. Beginning of command should have discarded. Now, I've, got, I've drawn my other two Sautex. They would have been really nice to have early, so every time I put in a, a card... I could have been digging further or pulling um, useful things. So, beginning of combat phase, I discard a card for the shard. I try and kill the sword brethren. Minus six hit points on the sword brethren. There we go. And he backlashes again. Oh, I might have to start thinking carefully about what I'm hitting with my Nahu mech. I need to consider whether or not backlash is likely to cancel his effect. Um... If I had gone for the Tech Marine Aspirant, for example, I could have definitely killed it. Uh, so that's that's just... Oh, that's a pain. Okay. And now we have the start of a combat round at this planet, which means I have to discard a card again. And then it is my initiative. So... I have no actions, he has no actions, uh, I think I really want to hit the Dreadnought because it hits harder when it hits back, and I want my shard to survive as long as possible, it's now 12 attack, 12 hit point unit. So, swinging at the Brethren. For, he says 15 is a rough guess, uh, it's 12. So twice the hit points, which is fantastic. And he plays Indomitable for, t for a resource. Completely negating the benefit of my Shard of the De Deceiver. Um, almost makes me think, having the Deceiver in my deck like this, I almost think maybe I should be... Uh, oh yeah, his Unstoppable triggers Taras and he gets three resources. Maybe I should be using the Shard, I should be putting out... Uh, duplicate factions, so I should have put out my extra Astra Militarum and Tau and stuff on the early planets to because I knew I needed a big discard pile to make the Deceiver just really, really nasty. So he gets rid of Nahumek, he focuses on that, which is fine. Still got a Shard undamaged on the first planet. Does four damage to the Shard, there we go, and I realise I shouldn't have discarded Hate, I should have kept it because it would have meant I get a shield. Does two damage from Mavros. And I was thinking, excellent, okay, let's at least, okay, I discard another. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, what can I do next? But he uses his uh, Techno and Aspirant to ready the Vengeance. And to ready the other Vengeance. And the Dreadnought. And then they swing. And yeah, I, I should have got the Tech Marine Aspirant there. I should have killed that for sure, rather than risking the backlash. But you learn. Um, and then uh, he's... There we go. Killed the Shard far quicker than I would have liked. It's done. It's gone. It's done. I have nothing else. And that is GG. I still think that this Rainbow deck has potential. If you play it right... Um, being able to do area effect 6 and having the Shard of Deceiver with heaps of cards that you've discarded because you've got a lot of cheap things that you've allowed to die on first planets would be good. But then he's got two more Indomitables and a Crushing Blow, that uh, two Crushing Blows, 
that I had no real answers for. So in this case, it just it just didn't do enough. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed, and I'm going to keep bringing out this rainbow deck every now and then, and hopefully it'll uh, it'll do better in the future. And certainly, don't let people trigger Taurus three times in one turn. It's generally a recipe for disaster. Catch you next time, guys.